ready for a great day today or what I think God is going to meet us exactly where we are. Give somebody a fist bump and give them a kiss on the cheek if you know them well enough. I'm at James River Church, Shoreline City. I'm at one of the best churches. The best churches. The best churches in the entire world. Pastors John and Debbie, uh, I mean, come on. Are they even real? Are they even... I am, we sit across from them at dinner last night, and I'm like, honey, can you believe these people? They have the audacity to be kind and loving and generous and authentic and just love people. They're talking to the waiter. They're talking to the folks pouring the water, and they're just pouring life and love and hope. And I left there going, I'm not even a Christian. I got to give my heart and my life to Jesus Christ after this. Give it up for Pastors John and Debbie. I honor them so much. 37 years in the ministry, loving God, loving people. We are so inspired by them. And I know life is trying to hit us here, and I actually felt a very particular assignment today. I felt a very particular assignment for James River, for Shoreline City, for everyone who is online. You are a part of this family, no less the church than those that are sitting in buildings. And we know that God wants to meet every single one of us. And I felt, I felt an assignment that I needed, to, I needed to confront and attack discouragement and distortion. Discouragement and distortion, these things that are trying to get into our heads and our hearts, and whether you're married or single, whether you are an older person or a younger person, all you have to do is live a little while, and discouragement and distortion will try to get in there. If you're a business owner, discouragement and distortion will try to get in there. If you're a student, if you got parents, shoot, if you got kids, discouragement. And distortion will try to get in there, but we're going to leave today. We're going to leave this moment. And now that things can live on demand, who knows when someone might be watching this, but God might have you stumble on this at the right time in the year 2078, should Jesus tarry. And this is the message that you need. And God is saying, I want you to leave this moment knowing that you've got courage in your soul to be who I've called you to be and do what I've called you to do. And you'll have the clarity that you and I need to see. Jesus for who he actually is. If you have your Bibles, go with me to, to a beautiful verse of Scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 57. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. It's a short verse, but a great one. It says, but thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I wanted to have a sexy title for today, but the only word that kept coming to my mind over and over was victory. That's it. So that's the title for today's message. Just, just victory. Just victory, 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 victory. That's all that I keep hearing in my spirit. That's all I keep hearing in my head. That's all I keep hearing in my heart is victory, 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 victory in every single area of your life. Victory in your mindset. Victory in your family. Victory over your physical body. Victory in your kids. Victory at your job. Victory in your physical body. Victory everywhere you walk. There's not a place that you can go where victory does not go. Victory. 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 Victory over your shame. Victory over death. Victory over disease. Victory over fear. Victory over mental illness victory, 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 and where discouragement has tried to get in there, we're declaring today victory over every area of your life. That's what God is saying. I feel God in this place today. I feel hope rising up. Oh my goodness. Victory. You're taking notes. You're taking notes. You can jot this down. I think we've got a screen for you as well. Victory in the seen and unseen. Victory in the now and the not yet. So what you can see, we're believing for victory there. What you can't see, what I can't see, victory there too. Victory in our now and victory in the not yet. The place 
where we haven't even arrived, but God already is. Victory in that spot too. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The, the, the problem with victory is it requires a battle. <laughs> I wish we could just have victory and there'd be no fight. <laughs> but in order, in order for there to be victory, you, you, you've got to you got to have a battle. You, you got to have something that, that's coming against you, some type of fight, some type of struggle, some type of, some type of difficulty. And, and again, if you've lived for any period of time, you, you've experienced this. Some of us are in some battles right now. Some of us are in some battles with our health right now. Some of us are in some battles with our spouse right now. Shoot, some of us are in battles with our singleness, trying to beat our singleness. It's like, I need a ring immediately. Lord, get this singleness off of me. There's so many different things that can come against us. So many different things that we can be facing. And if you're eight years old, you can be facing some battles. And, and sometimes to an adult, that might seem insignificant. But to an eight-year-old, that might be their whole world. And, and maybe it might not just be they're being bullied at school. Or maybe it might be their parents are talking about divorce. Or they hear lots of arguing in the house. And this is weighing on this little boy, little girl's shoulders. Some of us are in marriages right now that we don't like. It's just, but we're coming up for prayer and we're asking God to work a miracle and we're getting ready to pray and fast and we're trying to do all that we know to do, but things just have not turned around and it's been one year or two years or five years and just the person is not changing. He or she is not keeping up their end of the deal. It's just, it's a battle. Some of us have some dreams to get some businesses off the ground and, and just the financing is not coming together or the team is not coming together or someone said they were going to be with you and then they decided they're not going to be with you anymore and they were a necessary component for you to get what you needed to move forward so it can be looking like everything is falling apart in front of you. In order for there to be victory, there has to be some type of conflict some type of battle, some type of struggle, some type of war. So with all the conflict and with all the tension and with all the issues that we have personally and corporately and, and what's going on all over the world, we're going to dig into this, some scriptures here and see God speaks the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ to our very souls. Colossians chapter 2 verses 13 through 15. We'll put the scriptures on the screen if you didn't bring your Bible so you can follow along. It says, when you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, not some of them, but he forgave us all our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. The, the Bible was not originally written in English. Uh, there are some other languages the Bible was originally written in, Hebrew, Greek, Aramaic. So what we do in English is we read it and we, we translate the word into English so that you and I can, can read it. So what we're reading here in, in Colossians chapter 2, verse number 15, I want to I wanna break down these words a little bit so we can get a better, clearer picture of what Jesus Christ did for us. This word disarmed means to take off or strip off clothing. So what Jesus said on the cross is he, he took off and he stripped off clothing. He thoroughly renounced 
the powers and authorities. What are powers and authorities? Powers, it signifies something that's first in rank. Authority, something that has taken a state of control over something. Some of us have an authority in our lives right now that has taken over control. It's fear that's gripped us. It's anxiety that's gripped us. It's debt that's gripped us. It's insecurity that's gripped us. It's darkness that has gripped us. We have some suicidal thoughts that might be battling us. Pornography that might be coming against us. There's some things that are trying to come against us. Sons and daughters of God and what Jesus did at the cross is he he stripped off he thoroughly renounced the powers and the authorities what he did is he made a public spectacle that means to cause someone to suffer public disgrace or shame you ever you ever been pants you know what I'm talking about like pants <laughs> Remember high school, you know, you're talking to the girl, you're like, hey, what's up, girl? I lo love you, girl. Yeah, yeah, what's your number? Or oh, what's your page your number? You know, to those of us who are old. <laughs> and you're there, you're talking, and your buddy from the football team or the basketball team comes up behind you. To Girls don't do this stuff to each other, but, but guys, we're dumb. And, and so we stand there. Somebody just, you know, pull down your pants. This happens. My oldest son, our 16-year-old, does this to our 10-year-old all the time. All the time. Parker pants Grayson all the time in our house. And, and Grayson, this is just inside information, is not always wearing what he needs to be wearing underneath his shorts in the house. <laughs> Grayson put on some underwear. So Parker is there, and he comes up behind Grayson. We're all in the kitchen, hanging out, about to have dinner. And all of a sudden, we hear Grayson, Parker! And we look around, and we just see Grayson's, Ooh! you know, he's there hanging out. <laughs> pants. Public shame. I need you to see, I need you to see that Jesus on the cross, he, uh, what he did to the devil, is he? <laughs> he, pan he pants the devil. <laughs> Jesus, he just, public shame. <laughs> what, what he did, is made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them. All of this happened by the cross. The word triumph um, means to, to, to publicly exalt the victor, that's Jesus, who leads a victory, a, a victory procession. And he puts the conquered on display as totally defeated. He puts the conquered on display as totally defeated. So Christ, my friends, is the victor. This is what happened in Colossians chapter 2. This is what we read happened on the cross. Jesus is the victor. So what the enemy does, if the enemy can distort our view of what happened then, he can distort the truth of now. If the enemy can distort our view of then, he can distort the truth of now. Uh, any Kansas City Chiefs fans uh, in, in the room? Okay. Um, so, so Kansas City, I know your pastor, he's Denver Broncos. Uh, whoo, tough being a Broncos fan, but, but the Kansas City Chiefs, they won the championship, not this past year, sorry about that one, but, but the year before, they won it the year before. Crush the 49ers, crush them. Now, now, whenever they're playing in the Super Bowl, uh, they don't know who's gonna win. So they have to make two shirts for the champions and two hats. So they, when the 49ers are playing against the Kansas City Chief, there are two hats sitting in some closet somewhere. One says, Kansas City Chiefs, champions. The other one says, San Francisco 49ers, champions. One shirt says, Kansas City Chiefs, champions. The other one says, San Francisco 49ers, champions. And then once the, the clock is done and we know who the winner is, they bring out the, the appropriate hats and shirts. Well, they got to do something else with those other hats and shirts. They don't burn them. Maybe you've seen this on ESPN. They actually send these to other parts of the world. There are some people walking around right now that think... <laughs> The San Francisco 49ers are the champions. They got the hat, they got the shirt, and they're like, yeah, I'm a 49ers fan. 
not knowing they lost. There are some Christians walking around that have picked up the wrong hat and have put on the wrong shirt and they're saved on the inside but walking around on the outside as if the enemy is the champion of their mind and the enemy is the champion of their soul and I just had to announce to you that you're wearing the wrong jersey that's the wrong hat that's not who won the one who won his name is Jesus Christ is the victor he's the one who made a public spectacle of the enemy get your mind right church now we think, we think, we think maybe the enemy won because we've, we prayed for someone not to pass away and they did. Or the circumstance didn't change, so that means maybe we lost. Or God didn't work the miracle, so he must not do miracles. Or maybe because there's pain in this world that God must not be good. My prayer wasn't answered the way I wanted it to be answered. So that means maybe God does not hear my prayers. And we've got all this distortion that's out there. And this stuff has crept into the church and it's trying to remove the authority of what Jesus Christ did on the cross and have us believe a lie and wear the hat and a shirt of a lie. But I feel like God sent me here today just to remind all of us that you gotta take off that hat, get rid of that shirt, put on the full armor of God and remember who you are in Jesus. This word triumphing, man, I, I, I gotta break this down. This word triumphing, it's a cool, cool word. Uh, this is a little side note. I didn't tell this the first service, uh, but when it talks about that word victory, it actually is from, from Nike. It was, uh, the Greeks believed it was the goddess of victory. Uh, and, and that's where uh, we end up getting this word victory uh, from. It's from, I'll never wear Adidas again. <laughs> uh, because. We're walking around, walking around in victory. So this, this triumphal, this, this triumphing over the enemy, I need you to see this, I need you to see this. What would happen, what would happen is after one of the Roman generals won a victory, they would get on a chariot and they would come into the city, okay? This is the Roman general, he's in the chariot. He's in the city, number one, this general will enter the city on a chariot preceded by all the captives and the spoils taken in war. So that's all that's in front of him. Then he's followed by, by his troops on his way to the capital. And all their spears and is adorned with laurel as they all shout, triumph, 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 triumph. And the chariot might be his kids with him or maybe some of his closest friends. Maybe there might be a slave behind him holding a crown above his head as he's in this chariot and the defeated foes would be chained to the chariot. I want you to see your savior on a chariot. Horses pulling him, his shoulders are back. I want you to see the army, that's us, the children of God, shouting at the top of our lungs, triumph, 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 triumph. I want you to see your friend when they're in the hospital room and they're not sure if they're gonna make it out. I want you to start to announce to them, triumph, 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 triumph. I want you, when your friend is struggling in their marriage, to remind them that their savior is on a chariot and he's riding through the city headed to the capital and he's got the spoils of war all around him and I want you to whisper in their ear triumph 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 because right now the voice of the enemy is trying to get so loud so we need the voice of the church to get even louder to say God I announce to every son and daughter every man every woman every married person every single person you are not defeated you're walking in victory because you're saved is high and lifted up he's on a chariot right now and there's triumph and victory all around him that's who you're serving Whenever the Kansas City Chiefs won that parade, won that, won, that, won that Super Bowl, there's a massive parade. Everybody's in the streets. Everybody's shouting. Everybody's dancing. That's why I'm so glad your church is not boring. 
I'm glad this church is a party on Sunday. I love that. I love, turn up the music. Let's go ahead and shout even more. Let's not turn it down. We don't need to be quiet. We got a savior that's riding in on a chariot. That's why we sing these songs of worship. We're not trying to take up time. We're trying to remind our hearts and remind our heads that our king is on a chariot and we're shouting triumph. That's what every song is. It's a song of triumph. Song of victory. So here we have, we have, we have Christ who is the victor. Go with me now. Go with me to Isaiah. Go with me to Isaiah. I got, I got some more Bible. I got some more Bible. Go with me to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 6, verse number 1. Watch this. Watch this. Oh, I like this one. I like this. In the year, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Okay, uh, if you're an English major, you're like this, because we got nouns, we got verbs. Train can mean a bunch of different things. Train can be a verb, like I, I train you, meaning I'm trying to teach you something, a skill, a behavior. Train can be a verb. Train can also be a noun, meaning like Thomas the Train. Come on, parents. How many times have we watched that? <laughs> Dear Lord. <laughs> and, and you got Thomas the Train, a, a train, a bunch of railroad cars together. Well, then also you have the train, like when a woman's getting married. Come on, single ladies. Come on, give me a shout out. Woo! You're like, yes, I, I can't wait. I can't wait for that train. God, give me that train in Jesus' name. You know, it's like, can't wait. <laughs> and you got, you got that train behind you. You see, uh, when Isaiah is saying this, he's, he's talking about like the, the Egyptian and the Assyrian kings and the monarchs of that day. They had these elaborate thrones. And not only did they have these elaborate thrones, they had these elaborate robes. And every time they defeated another king, another monarch, or attacked another camp and they won, they would go to the leader of that camp and they would take the train of that king's robe and they would cut it. And they would cut that robe and they would sew it onto their own robe. And they would do this to announce, I beat you. I've got victory over you. So when Isaiah is sitting here and he's looking up in Isaiah chapter 6 verse number 1 and he says, I see the Lord high and lifted up and the train he has is not short. The train he has is not small. The train of his robe, whoo, I've never even seen one like this. It was so long, it filled the entire temple, announcing to us that there was victory after victory after victory after victory after victory. This Lord that I saw had been in so many battles and had won so many battles and had defeated so many enemies that he could not help but have a robe that filled the entire temple. That is the Savior that you and I serve today. The train of his robe filled the temple. This, in Isaiah 6, is Jesus. It's actually Jesus. I'm going to prove it to you. Go with me to John chapter 12, verse number 40. And 41, it says, he has, I don't have time to break down this verse. I wish I did, but I don't have time right now. He has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts so that they can neither see with their eyes nor understand with their hearts, nor turn, and I would heal them. This verse number 40 is actually taken from Isaiah chapter 6. In the year the king Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. And if you keep reading down, you get to about verse number 10. This right here is a quote from Isaiah chapter 6, verse number 10. And now, 
what John says to us in verse 41 of the Gospel of John chapter 12 is Isaiah said this because he saw Jesus' glory and spoke about him. So all the way in Isaiah chapter 6, this prophet, this major prophet, has this vision and he sees the Lord high and lifted up and the train of his robe filling the temple and the gospel of John interprets this for us and lets us know that when Isaiah saw that vision, he was not just seeing the Lord, he was seeing the glory of Jesus in that moment. I like this so much because it says the train of his robe filled the temple. Now you and I like to think temple like a building. Yes, we can have like this beautiful church that we're remodeling and y'all are giving towards to help be a tool to help reach and love on people. That is fantastic. Yes, this is a temple, but in the New Testament, you, you know what the, what the premier temple is? It's you. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So now read Isaiah chapter 6 like this. I saw the Lord high and lifted up and the train of his robe filled the temple. Meaning I've got the flowing robe of his victory flowing through my body because Jesus is now on the inside of me. This is why you don't walk around like <laughs> just a little cup of tea. I don't need much. I don't need much. No, no, I don't need much. I just need a little, little cup of tea. I don't know why my face looks like this. No, I don't know why I'm bent over like this. But this is how some of us walk into job interviews. This is how some of us are living our single life. Oh, I don't have a ring, so... That some of us teenagers are living our life, well, when I get older, when I can make my own decisions, when I get out of the house. Some of us young adults are just kind of waiting. Uh, I'm not going to grow up yet. I'm just going to keep on hanging out and playing video games. And one day, maybe God will use me, maybe one day. We got people with gray hair saying, well, uh, I'm past my prime. I'm past my prime, so God can't use me anymore. I guess it's just for the young people. It's not for me. It's just for the young people. Just walking around like this. And I think Jesus saying, psst, psst, hey, psst, come here. When you keep bending over and walking around like this, you're balling up my glory. <laughs> I got a train that I'm trying to let flow through you. And when you're living life hunched over, my train can't flow the way it needs to. So son and daughter, I need you to know that what I did for you on the cross was not for you to live a life hunched over, not for you to live a life downtrodden, not for you to live a life in defeat, not for you to live a life thinking your life is over. I need you to lift yourself up by the grace that I provide. Put your shoulders back, lift your head up, and remind yourself who's living on the inside of you that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. The of my glory is filling your temple everywhere you walk victory walks every building you walk into victory enters that building every time you enter into a difficulty victory is already there because the glory of God is all over you man I'm preaching harder than I want to Victory, 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 victory in the name of Jesus. Okay, 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 okay. Y'all, 
Pastor John, I'm sorry I'm screaming so much. I'm just so excited. Like I, I just sense so much faith rising up on the inside of us. So much hope rising up on the inside of us. Okay, so it's so on Isaiah 6. Isaiah 6, 1, it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, that's when he saw the Lord. High and lifted up. And the train of his robe filling the temple. It was in a year where somebody cared about past that he saw the Lord high and lifted up. So it's not in the year where everything's perfect. It's not in the year that everything's the way I want it to be. It's not in the year where everybody votes this way or votes that way. It's not in the year where everybody looks like this or looks like that. It's not in the year where everybody gets along. It's not in that year. It's in the year that all hell broke loose. <laughs> It's in the year that people lost their mind. It's in the year that the enemy was trying to tear everybody apart. It's in the year that the enemy was trying to attack the church to make us focus on mass or no mass, or make us focus on vaccinated or no va not vaccinated. Try to make us focus on Republican and Democrat. And he's trying to get us to focus on all these things that are temporary. And Jesus is like, I'm in a chariot high and lifted up. It's in that year that the enemy was trying to tear us apart. In that year, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. In that year, it wasn't the best year. It was the the worst year and in the worst year I saw the Lord high and lifted up it was in the cancer I saw the Lord high and lifted up it was in the pain I saw the Lord high and lifted up go with me go with me to first Corinthians 15 man you can get up here because I'm gonna preach too much I'm gonna, I'm gonna preach so much I'm, I'm gonna keep on going here I got a TD Jakes hanky right here who gave me this? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 26. It says, the last enemy, the la this is a short verse, important verse. The last enemy to be defeated, to be destroyed rather, the last enemy to be destroyed is death. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. It is possible, it is possible for something to be defeated, but not yet destroyed. Okay, follow, follow me here, follow me here. It's possible for it to be defeated and not destroyed. So death, there is coming a day when it will be destroyed. Right now it's defeated. Um, you know when, whenever like a sports team wins, like they win the match. Uh, or, or let, let's say uh, uh, UFC, UFC fighting. Uh, Conor McGregor uh, just fought and, and, and he lost. If you don't know who Conor McGregor is, that's fine. Don't look him up. He's, God's trying to work in his heart and his life. I pray for his salvation in Jesus' name, okay? All of us were far off at some point in time and thankful for the grace of God. So, so Conor McGregor, uh, he had this fight and he, at the end of the first round, the fight was over. The, the ref came in and said, it's done, TKO, it's finished. The, the fight is done, you've lost, it's done. Uh, but after, after it was done, McGregor was still in the ring. And even though he was still in the ring, he was shouting yelling, cussing, being disrespectful. He lost, but he's still in the ring. He lost, but he can still talk. But then a moment came, and this is what happens. At every UFC fight, it happens after every championship game, we all see who won, the score is done, the clock is zero, but there's a moment after all of that happens, where there's like this official, official moment, like to announce to everybody, we, I, you know who won, but let me just put the final nail in the coffin to let everybody know who won. And there's this guy named Bruce that comes to the center of the ring. And this guy, Bruce, has had this voice that he's had for years. And he stands up in the middle, and we all 
already know who won the bout, but he's just going to make another announcement. And this is what happened with you and I with Jesus. And I think I see it like this. I think I see Bruce coming to the middle saying, this bout was stopped on the third day after the cross of Calvary. Jesus, the Son of God, the King of Kings, the lover of humanity, the healer of the sick, the light in the darkness, the one who defeated death, hell, and the grave, and the devil. This Jesus is now high and lifted up. He holds up his arms in victory. Oh my goodness, now we see what we already knew. First Corinthians 15, 54, when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that it was written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, oh death, is your victory? Where, oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That is what you and I are walking in right now. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. 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 Through tears, stand firm. Through pain, stand firm. Through difficulty, stand firm. Stand, always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. I want you right now to see yourself walking in victory that comes from Jesus and Jesus Christ alone. Today, I really want to encourage you right now to order New Normal on Amazon or wherever books are sold. You can pick up one for yourself, a friend, or a family member because God wants you to live in a land that's full of His promise and possibility, and we believe this book will help you on your journey to a new normal. We also have an amazing study guide available on Amazon so you can go through the book with a small group, your spouse, or even friends at a coffee shop so you can get the most out of this amazing resource. As you go throughout your day, this is our prayer for you. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May he smile on you and be gracious to you. May he show you his favor and give you his peace. God bless.